Hello, I'm Odin, and today I'm going to make another requested prop. It's Spider-Man's web shooters. I want to make everything to fit the shape of my arm. I don't want to just glue all the parts together flat and then hope that they roll up nice. I'd rather start on a shape that is close to my wrist and glue each layer on top of that. Then it'll want to be a round shape at the very beginning. And of course, something went a little wrong and the forms that I made were actually two inches bigger than my arm. So I cut a two inch piece out and glued them back together to make them the right size. I would guess that if you wanted to do this, you could measure your wrist and your forearm and then make a cone that's that size. You could probably even just use cardboard and duct tape. To start my pattern, I'll wrap one of them with paper. Then I draw the outline of the shooters and then cut it out to make a paper pattern, which I can then trace onto poster board. I plan on using multiple layers of two millimeter craft foam to make the web shooters, but I want a sturdy base for them and I'm afraid pure foam will stretch or tear, so I cut a length of backpack web strapping three quarters of an inch longer than my wrist, and I sew Velcro to the ends. I make sure the strap will fit inside my pattern, and then I can cut the first layer of two millimeter craft foam and glue it to the strap with contact cement. I trace my first pattern onto a new piece of poster board and make my next layer, which starts at the web emitter and wraps around to the Velcro seam. This layer has the start of the web texture on the wrist and I'll help hide the thickness of the Velcro by building up the other side. To start the actual web emitter, I cut one inch strips of EVA floor mat, but I don't cut them square. I cut the sides on an angle so they're one inch across the bottom and narrower at the top. So the actual web emitter is right here on the inside of the wrist. What I'm gonna do is use this little piece as the beginning of the housing for it. Now there's a nozzle where the web actually comes from. I figure I'll just use the tip of a ballpoint pen for that. This is the only part I actually really want. I'm gonna glue that onto the front and then build some more foam around it. I want to use another piece of the pin to hold the silver tip in place. So I cut a notch of the foam for it to sit in and then I can super glue it after everything is painted. I'll use contact cement to glue on the floor mat and then trim it to fit. I shave off about half the top where the web fluid cartridges will go and start to figure out how to wrap two millimeter foam over the top of the mat to make everything look cleaner and to finish off the front nozzle. My final piece is a funky H shape, but once I carefully glue it on, it covers the floor mat, it has edges for the nozzle, and it has sides to the cartridge port. And I made the ends extra long so I could trim them to fit. I add one more piece of two millimeter foam to cover the back slope. I cut strips of five millimeter foam to be the web fluid cartridges adding a beveled panel line down the center and another side cut to the ends that I'll paint red later. I want to add another layer on top of the emitter, so I make another funky H-shaped pattern. I cut out my foam and glue it on top. I use super glue to position the thin legs down the sides. This helps to hide all the seams and hides that there are two layers of foam on one side and only one layer on the Velcro side. Now for the intricate layer that'll give me the final webbing look. This pattern is for the skinny raised lines that go all around the wrist, and I'll need to cut two of these from two millimeter foam and glue them on neatly. After the pieces are cut, I trace where they'll sit on the wrists because I only want to put glue where I need it. Plasti dip spray will cover any exposed glue, but the texture of the glue on the foam is slightly different than just the texture of the foam by itself, and I want everything to be the same when it's finished. I also add some short webbing pieces on the Velcro side, and these will overhang a little to help hide the gap. There are lots of panel lines that run all over the web shooter, and I cut little lines in between the web bits and the wrists, and then a couple more on each side of the emitter. The web shooters need a trigger. I just trace a battery for the round button and make a two layer pattern. I can glue a neodymium magnet between layers of foam and sew one into a band of elastic that fits in my palm. I glue the trigger to the underside of the nozzle right next to the backpack webbing. Then I can wear the elastic band under a glove and the trigger will stay in my palm. After a couple coats of plastic dipper sprayed on, I use silver craft paint to trim the nozzle and to paint the web fluid cartridges. There's a bit of red on one end of the cartridge, so I'll paint that with some acrylic paint as well. Then I can glue the pen tips in place with super glue.
All the materials I used to make these web shooters were picked up locally, and I put a part list in the description. Now remember, there's many different ways that you can make something, but this is how Odin makes. I now have a Patreon page, which will give you the chance to win props that are made right here in Odin Makes. And it's the only place where I'll talk about my upcoming builds. If you like the video or have ideas or something for me to make, please leave them in the comments below. And if you make any of these projects, you can send me a picture. All the pattern pieces that I made during this episode, all the different ones, I've scanned them and they're available in the description below so you can print them out and make your own web shooter.